about him and he's gone and you don't talk about it. Section 311 gives immunity to law enforcement engaging in spying operations against the American people. Uh, we're going beyond governments. We're going into the hearts and minds of individuals. Uh, there's in more sections who say that private corporations can spy on you and have no liability. They even state in some of the other sections that you won't have uh, any rights under the Fourth Amendment and that police don't even have to get secret warrants anymore, that they can just break in your home if they feel like it without a warrant, take whatever they want and never tell you they were there, or plant things there. My friends, you have got to read Patriot Act 2 and you've got to read our analysis of it at InfoWars.com. Section by section, you can then go to the bill, the House and Senate version, look at it for yourself. We've been uh, analyzing the House version here for you section by section. It is, it's just the end of America. There's no other way to describe it. Invasion of privacy. How omniscient government supercomputers can work for you. Losing something can be so frustrating. It's hard to remember where we put things. And psychics can be so expensive. But thanks to the new Department of Homeland Security, losing something will soon be a thing of the past. I'm the Constitution Hugger. Hey guys, where are my keys? Thanks. You guys are sweethearts. Homeland Security is every patriot's duty. You can get into the act too. But Stephen, you're probably being recorded as saying, doesn't all this government spying on its citizens mean losing our basic freedoms? Of course not. It means gaining limits on those freedoms. Something Uncle Sam likes to call Freedom Plus. And there's so many more benefits. In a fear-based economy, everybody's a spy. Total surveillance means total employment. Also, all additional benefits classified under the United States Patriot Act of 2001. For further information about these benefits, report to federal detention centers. Uh, happy clown candy centers. Of course, not everybody can handle that much freedom. For those who absolutely need their privacy, these convenient privacy boxes are just the ticket to get away from it all. I'm Stephen Colbert. I hope you've learned something tonight, but most of all, I hope you enjoy the police state. Attorney General John Ashcroft, shortly after the passage of the first Patriot Act in the aftermath of September 11th in late 2001, told a Senate panel in Congress that the Patriot Act didn't take anyone's liberties and that people that talked about phantoms of lost liberties were aiding the terrorist and that they would lose their liberties, that they were adding to the fog of war. Talk about double speak. He's saying we're not taking your liberties, but if you say we're taking your liberties, you aid the enemy, we'll take your liberties. But he one-upped himself uh, when it comes to out-and-out bald-faced lies. In 2003, while testifying before the House and Senate on two separate occasions, Mr. Ashcroft, upon being questioned about Patriot Act II that dwarfs Patriot Act I and its police state provisions, they said, tell us about Patriot Act II, which everybody has a copy of and has been introduced in the Senate. And Mr. Ashcroft said, there is no Patriot Act II. Well, I guess in lawyers speaking, he was telling the truth. The actual title of what is now known as Patriot Act II is the Domestic Security Enhancement Act of 2003. So let's go to some clips of Ashcroft back in 2001 saying they're not taking your liberty and then lying again in 2003 saying there is no Patriot Act II. Under Director Bob Mueller, the FBI is undergoing an historic reorganization to put the prevention of terrorism at the center of its law enforcement and national security effort. Outside Washington, we are forging new relationships of cooperation with state and local law enforcement. We've created 93 anti-terrorism task forces across the country in each U.S. attorney's district to integrate the communications and activities of state, local, and federal law enforcement. In all of these ways and more, the Department of Justice has sought to prevent terrorism with reason, careful balance, and excruciating attention to detail. Some of our critics, I regret to say, 
have shown less affection for detail. Their bold declaration of so-called facts have quickly dissolved upon inspection into vague conjecture. Charges of kangaroo courts and shredding the Constitution give new meaning to the term fog of war. Since lives and liberties depend on clarity, not obfuscation, and upon reason, not hyperbole, let me take this opportunity to be clear. Each action taken by the Department of Justice, as well as the War Crimes Commissions considered by the President and the Department of Defense, is carefully drawn to target a narrow class of individuals, terrorists. Our legal powers are targeted at terrorists. Our investigation is focused on terrorists. Our prevention strategy targets the terrorist threat. The United States government has defined terrorists as those who perpetrate premeditated, politically motivated violence against non-combatant targets. My message to America this morning then is this. If you fit this definition of a terrorist, fear the United States, for you will lose your liberty. We need honest, reasoned debate, not fear-mongering. To those who pit Americans against immigrants and citizens against non-citizens, to those who scare peace-loving people with phantoms of lost liberty, my message is this. Your tactics only aid terrorists. Senator, uh, with your permission, I'd like to respond to the suggestion that there is a Patriot Act II. Uh, when individuals indicate to you that if there is a proposal, we'll confer with you, I believe they are right. There is not a proposed terrorist act, too, from the Justice Department. I want history to judge you as the one who, during a very difficult period, tried to strike a balance and not one who allowed people to get carried away to a point where we hurt ourselves and threw away our Constitution. Man, it took a lot of nerve, didn't it, for him to get up there and say that? But Ashcroft is counting on you to be stupid, to be fooled, to not check out the legislation. I recommend that you routinely visit Infowars.com where we post key legislation that comes to our attention. But look, we're not omnipresent and we can't keep track of these tens of thousands of bills. So it's more important for you to go to the Library of Congress website at thomas.loc.gov and uh, peruse the bills for yourself and maybe you can find something like Patriot Act 2 and alert uh, folks in the alternative media so we can warn the American people and stop the New World Order from totally destroying the Bill of Rights and Constitution. I am glad to see though that uh, constitutional scholars on the left and right have been universally decrying Patriot Act 2, saying that it's even worse than the first Patriot Act. In fact, the Center for Accuracy and Reporting said that uh, it is basically the end of America. Conservative backlash. Provisions of Patriot II draft worry those on the right. The opposite ends of the political spectrum are coming together over the war on terror, but not in the way Attorney General John Ashcroft may have wanted. And after all this heat, he tried to deny it even existed after it's introduced in the House by Republicans and enrolled in the Senate by Democrats. And uh, they go on to report that federal courts, despite the fact the legislation has it passed, are already ruling that the government can hold U.S. citizens as enemy combatants during wartime without the constitutional protections afforded Americans. In